if we go back to the start of this, the World Heritage Process that we wanted to do for Budge Bim in order to get it protected at the highest level, its cultural heritage values, we go back to 2002 with the launch of the Lake Honda Sustainable Development Project. It was, it was about 17 years of working, of rewriting, of reading, um, and towards the end it became more frantic. We found out that our, our, what we have to demonstrate with World Heritage is Outstanding Universal Value, and our Outstanding Universal Value, or OUV, uh, was that we have one of the world's oldest aquaculture systems that are still in existence today. Uncle Dennis was saying, you know, 17 years in the making and that, and that's just, you know, they've been talking about World Heritage for longer than that. So that's just, you know, 17 years is as long as the process, you know, started. The state was anxious to come aboard with us. Commonwealth, not so. Um, and it took Gunnar Snapfine. Um, when he was Premier of Victoria to give the Commonwealth the push um, to get us up there on, on the tentative list. Yeah, so uh, Malcolm Turnbull, uh, as, when he was Prime Minister and Daniel Andrews as, as Premier of Victoria, uh, made an announcement out at uh, Tayrac or Lake Conda uh, in, in January 2017 um, that, uh, that they would accept, the Commonwealth would accept our tentative list nomination. Uh, and then it was uh, all systems go to get a uh, World Heritage nomination together. You have 12 months to, to put one together. And uh, we submitted our, our official World Heritage nomination in, in February 2018. I don't know what I was doing, but Uncle Dennis rang me up one day just uh, you know, asking if I wanted to head to Azerbaijan, you know, in a few months. And I was like, yeah, all right. And I was just, you know, I thought that I was going, you know, with everyone else at that time. So I was happy to put my hand up. And then it wasn't until about, you know, probably a couple of weeks prior to me actually taking off, where, um, you know, you notified me that I was going by myself pretty much for about nine days attending a, the, the World Heritage Young Professionals Forum. So it got me real nervous, I suppose. Yeah, it was. I was pretty close to pulling out. I even messaged Uncle Dennis just saying that, you know, I don't know, I don't feel comfortable going, but I somehow, you know, built up the courage and you know, got on that plane. And um, I think about 14 hours there and three hours from there to Azerbaijan. First off, I had to look up the country. Um, Azerbaijan, I'd never even heard of it. Uh, it was just a different landscape, I think, uh, coming into land. It's an oil-rich country, uh, so there was lots of oil wells around. Apparently the oil just bubbles up on the, through, the, through the surface and on, onto the ground in places. So yeah, we left from you know, winter time in Australia here and you know, Portland, 13 degrees. To, uh, Doha, we flew into first and that was I remember walking out of the airport, it was like 42 degrees and it just hit you. Now we move to the, another question, uh, the item 43 com 8b.14. And I would like to invite ICOMOS to present the nomination of the Butch Beam Cultural Landscape from Australia. <laughs> We were on the edge of our seat. Um, all the young ones had their phones out recording it, um, you know, with, um, on the live. Um, we were sitting there, we were waiting. We were waiting, the, all the other countries were um, talking about us, talking about our, our cultural system, our, our ancestors. My memory, the memory that really sticks in my mind um, 
isn't about the journey over or the journey back. It was walking into that room, sitting at the table that has had Australia, you know, a table that was labelled Australia. And then listening to each of those countries talk about our application for World Heritage Listing. And, you know, the first words I heard, heard was exemplary application. It was, it all happened very quickly. So we were sort of nervous. Um, I think we were more nervous about when it was actually going to happen. We were just sort of sitting there like, we didn't know whether we were going to be there all day or, yeah, we just didn't really know, so. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My delegation also joins the previous speakers in congratulating the State Party for this successful nomination. The Bujbim cultural landscape, landscape contains one of the world's oldest and most extensive aquaculture systems. It, is, it bears the exceptional testimony to the cultural traditions, knowledge, practices and ingenuity of the indigenous population. Their aquaculture practice have been shown to reach back at least 6,000 600 years and continue to be used today. But you think, no, this, this, this is too good to be true, because we're right there on the, um, we're right there at the World Heritage Committee, the, the Assembly's there, the world's there. All very excited. Um, we, we weren't sure, you know, if we're going to get World Heritage or not. Um, yeah, excitement walking down there, I suppose. Thank you. So as soon it is clear. Uh, I would like to approve the document in whole, and therefore I declare draft decision 43 com 8b.14 adopted as amended. Once the gavel went down and we were actually inscribed, I, I was sitting next to Eileen and here with the biggest cuddle. I hope I didn't squeeze it too hard, but it was. Just fantastic. It was fantastic for Eileen to be there. It, it took about, uh, what was it, about 10, 15 minutes for the president to go through everything, for the countries to have their comment, and then, then it went bang. Okay, you just got it. And we just. <sighs> yeah, that's how that's how surreal it is. It's just such a long build up, and then, you know, with the slam of a gavel, it's, you know, we've got world heritage. It's the people behind me that, that lead the way. Uh, we've got a lot of young people here talking about management before with a few of our budge bim rangers. Uh, I know that looking after this country and sharing this country is in safe and great hands with our community. Thank you. Thank you, Uncle Ken. Thank you, Meg. And thank you, Maya. <laughs> Woo! We were sort of sitting behind Dennis and Eileen, so it wasn't until I watched the recording later on that you could see that that relief on both their faces and they're smiling, excited to get World Heritage. Uh, shock. Shock, overwhelming sense of shock. <laughs> What's gone through my mind is I can't really explain it because I'm so overwhelmed, proud, happy, excited. So happy with the result and so we're all ready to celebrate accordingly. To have that as a milestone for the community and for the country is, is, is very deadly. Um, you don't really grasp the enormity of it until you get home. And again, I, I always emphasise that we've had that good support, good community support over many years. It wasn't just something that uh, you know arrived just before the World Heritage announcement or something like that. A lot more people now know about it and I'm more interested in learning about our history and our culture. When we had the bushfires in January 
2020, you know, most of the eastern seaboard was on fire, which was incredible. We've also had the bushfires and the coronavirus stuff since, since well, prior to Christmas. It was exhausting. You know, you got to the point, oh no, another document, another document to read. But the, in the end, it's all worthwhile. You know, first community-led application. It wasn't put, done by the state, it wasn't done by the Commonwealth. It was done by a community of Gunditjmara people. I think there's a lot of you know, bigger, better things to look out for in the future too. We've relied on, on good partnerships and, and, and good uh, contributions from a, a wide variety of people, organisations, agencies uh, over the years and uh, I think that was reflected as well. I think that we it was an important part of our nomination that we, we had this good community support. We, we certainly need to keep uh, improving our management and make sure that we, we protect those values, those important values that we were, we were inscribed under.